Now let's go up to the filter menu and let's choose vanishing point. And a very large dialog box <laughs> is going to end up on your screen. And because the last time I used this filter, I drew this grid, that's why the grid is automatically appearing. It won't happen that way for you. So I'm going to go ahead and press the delete key and get rid of that grid. So this is what you'll see as soon as you open the vanishing point filter. Your first job, once you get to this point, is to create the perspective plane. And that's super easy. All you have to do is make sure that this little tool is active in the vanishing point dialog, and it should be. All you're going to do is click all four corners of the thing that you want to match the perspective of, and Photoshop will draw the plane for you. Now, for this particular image, I can't get to those bottom corners because of my zoom level, so let's just zoom out a few times to make that small enough where I can actually click out here, which is where the corner points of that building really would be. Okay, maybe I don't have to zoom out that far. Okay, so it doesn't matter which corner you start on. It's easiest to start on the ones that you can actually see. So let's click once to set a point, and let's move over to the other corner of the building and click to set a point. And now let's mouse way down here. And I'm just mousing around until my the line that Photoshop is drawing matches the angle of the object. So click again, and now I'm going to come over here to this side, and again, I'm just manipulating this. I'm not pushing down anything. I'm just dragging around, and I want that blue line to be on the edge of the building. So depending upon the object that you're working with, uh, you might have to zoom way out in order to see beyond the edges of the image. Now right now, I have a red plane going on, which tells me, that's Photoshop's way of telling me that you've drawn an impossible perspective plane. So all you have to do is to fix it is to grab one of the corner points and you just fine tune it. You just drag it a little bit out until Photoshop gives you that grid. So I'm not doing any magic to get that grid. I'm just, Photoshop was telling me, I cannot create a perspective plane for you with that angle. <laughs> Please fix it for me. So you just grab any corner point and you just tweak it a little bit until you get this nice grid. So now I can zoom back in because I'm really only interested in this part of the image. Now we're ready to paste. So we can press Command V or Control V and in comes our superhero. But he's not in perspective. What's going on, Photoshop? Well, this is Photoshop's way of giving you an opportunity to resize the image, should you choose to. Scoot it around a little bit if you want. So we could reposition this guy, but as soon as we click on him and drag him onto that mesh, then he flip-flops to the proper perspective, okay? So let's just undo that and look at that again. So if you click somewhere outside of the plane, see how the plane is right here and here? If you click outside of the plane, you can move him around. The reason he popped onto the plane a second ago is because I clicked down here, which was inside the plane. So at this point, you can press the T key, not Command T or Control T, just T for transform. And now I've got transform handles. So I could shift drag to resize our superhero if I wanted to do that. And again, to make him pop to the plane, all you have to do is click and drag him onto the plane. And you can do resizing here too. I still have those resizing handles, I just can't see them.